Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to talk about gradient remapping inside of Nuke and uh, what exactly that is and how we can use it. So if you guys are familiar with Photoshop, you might be familiar with a technique called gradient remapping, which is essentially just taking uh, a black and white image like this and remapping multiple color uh, values into it. So from the zero to one, uh, zero to one so white being one and zero being black, we can shove a bunch of different uh, color values into that uh, range. And essentially we can actually do this in Nuke and uh, I don't think a lot of people are aware of this technique uh, with the ST map. So normally how we use an ST map, you guys should already be familiar as this advanced tutorial. Uh, it's basically just for uh, UV sticking textures onto UV renders out of you know CG. So that's mainly what it's used for. Um, but we can use it for a variety of different things. So this technique is actually really great for a couple different things. So, uh, flares, skies, uh, fire jet engines, uh, underwater light fall off, and you know whatever galaxy kind of space effects you're doing. Um, so if you have that, I'll pull it open here. So here's a couple of different examples visually. So if you just obviously skies are going to benefit a lot from this because uh, there's a lot of grad gradation uh, in there. So we can see some uh, jet engines have a lot in there. So we have some white going to orange. And then on the very edge is kind of pinkish tone. Um, and even though it almost looks like some kind of white on the edge, maybe some air or something like that. Um, so these kind of effects really benefit from this. Um, fire is uh, another good one. Underwater effects, volumetric, depends on the camera and the lighting. But you know, even here we can see it's kind of white in the center. Uh, kind of falling into a very light desaturated purple and then into these kind of uh, bluish tones and then also into these darker tones. So if you were to do that traditionally, you're going to have to stack a lot of um, basically radials and color grades and keyers and stuff like that to try to get that nice fall off. Uh, again, lens flares uh, and all that stuff. So if we get into exactly how we can do this, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, I'll just create a scratch one here, uh, put a radio, and we'll grab an ST map. And make sure that the ST map portion is plugged into the image that you're putting into it. You want to remap the colors. And the colors that you want to remap uh, goes into the source. So I'm going to take a constant, uh, choose a color, and we'll just grab something here. And maybe we'll go with this kind of weird color and plug that into the source. And so what you want to do in here is you want to go to the ST map and switch the UV channels to RGB. And we can check off uh, one of these channels. So it's only going to grab one uh, basically alpha uh, from whatever channel you're selecting. So I'm just going to turn off the green channel just so it's grabbing only the red channel uh, from this radial. And essentially the way this works is pretty weird but it's kind of like this, so if I show you. Uh, essentially what you put in the bottom left corner is the black, so if you look here at our radial, that would be this area around, and then on the right side is the white. So that's uh, how the colors are gonna remap. So if I put this green cube, if I put a transform, put it on the left side. Uh, and also, the way this node is working is kind of tricky. It's only looking at the bottom row of pixels. So if I put it, the green cube here and I look at it, nothing's going to happen. But if I put this green cube on the bottom and I turn this and I look at this, you can see it's starting to do something here. So we can see something's happening. So let's put another color, copy and paste it, stick it in, and let's change the color to something else and move it next to it. So again, if you remember, I said on the left side is black, on the, on the right side is white. So if you look at our picture here, where it's more white is going to appear more uh, this purple color. So essentially, it's already doing the remap. And if I blur uh, our colors together, we'll get a nicer fall off. So if I just blur the colors a little bit, like this. And now I look at the ST map, we can see that it's starting to do that uh, gradient remapping effect. Uh, one thing you can do is if you're not liking how the colors are kind of falling off here, uh, we can shift them around essentially with these transforms. So if I shift uh, one of these colors further over to the left or further over to the right, uh, it's going to shift 
essentially where those colors are remapping into our zero to one image. So for example, if I want, let's go to our image here and we'll mask it by the radial just so we can see exactly what that's looking like. So this is what our image is looking like. If I want more green in that uh, image, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna pull this purple over just a little bit. So we have more green and I'll just pull the green over and scale it up. Again, it doesn't matter what's happening up here. It only matters the bottom pixels on the frame. And I look at this. So now you can see we have more green inside of inside of that picture. And again, I could just take the X translate and uh, move it back and forth. And I can slide those colors around uh, how I want. And it's going to be better if I have uh, give alphas to these. So I'm going to uh, use a shuffle node here and just make sure we have alpha uh, on both of these constants so that if they are overlapping, uh, we're not gonna get, um, put it before the transform there. We're not gonna get uh, some kind of transparent color shift there. So that's kind of what we do. We have a, a, just a constant, solid alpha. We can translate them uh, left and right, and that's gonna decide where the colors are remapping in this image. So if I put a transform here, it'll be easier, and I can just shift it uh, so I type negative 50 and I just kind of play around you'll see that that uh, that color is sliding around in our uh, radio so that's essentially the concept now of course you can uh, so I'm gonna go here in this example so this is the example I had here and I masked it so that's the example and I can take the transform I put after the the two of these guys and shift it around and you'll see that that's giving a nice uh, effect there um, so of course you can add more colors so here's the here's three colors being put in and again only the bottom pixel matters so it doesn't matter if they're not stacked you can just kind of quickly place them and you'll, you'll get an effect like this if I turn the blur off you'll see it's a very harsh remap and I'm just using a normal radial and if I shift them around I can see that that's shifting around in the way that I would expect and I can blur that together and get a nice result and mask it by itself because uh, this is kind of uh, destroying the alpha there. So we'll just kind of mask it back and get something like that. So that's going to give us something we can actually use and make a lens flare or whatever you're doing. Uh, and that's going to work for any black and white image. So again, if you have a roto shape, you can remap the roto shape through a feather. So I'm just feathering this roto shape here. We just look at it, looks like that. The remap set to the red channel and essentially that's uh, the effect. So that's pretty cool. Uh, some other examples of what I did with this. Um, this is not necessary, uh, but I took this concept a little bit further and made a uh, quadratic luma key tool. Um, so I use this in my Nuke 404 class. Uh, if you guys are interested in taking that, it's more of an intermediate course, kind of mid-level sort of. Uh, it's uh, available in the description below if you're interested. Uh, advanced color grading and relighting. Um, but essentially what this luminance key does is if we open it up, I'll just show you what it is. Uh, essentially what I'm taking here is the same gradient remap technique. So I'm using the ST map, um, but I'm using, uh, essentially rotor shapes with a quadratic fall off inside of them. And this is going to give us a nice roll off of the highlights, uh, unlike a normal keyer. So a normal keyer is going to give us something like this. So if I go here, just set these back to default. Let's say, like my previous tutorials, if you looked at my YouTube channel, uh, we're talking about glossiness on some asphalt. Um, normally, you'd have to stack a lot of keyers to get nice pingy highlights uh, on some rocks like this. Um, so I would have to go here in my in my uh, luminance key, and I would have to try to isolate. Okay, let's just try to get the very highlights on some of these rocks. Okay, that's going to work for the very uh, the pings of the rocks. But what if I want some highlights around those rocks? Well, I'd have to go here with another keyer and do something like this. And then I had to stack these together. And, you know, it's kind of a process. So basically, I created a tool called Quadratic Luma Key, um, which kind of does this automatically. So it's using this, um, this uh, exponential glow. And essentially, when you're shifting the key, it's just sliding it left and right in this uh, ST map. So it's doing the same thing I just showed you with the colors, except we're doing it with this quadratic fall off effect. 
and it's really not advanced or anything. Uh, if you guys are like tool makers out there, you're probably looking at this like it's really simple. Uh, there's people out there definitely better than me at uh, you know making tools and stuff like that, but I, I think this is pretty useful uh, for what it is. So basically, if I shift that key around, you'll see that not only am I getting some broad kind of uh, key in there, but I'm also getting the little pings of highlights uh, automatically. So I'm not having to like stack a bunch of keys. So if we again, if we go back and compare, we see that's kind of flat, and then we have the the pings, but they're not together. So this quadratic luma key is kind of doing that, and I can adjust the gamma uh, or the multiply in there as well. And it, there's different modes that I put in here as well, so you can switch the type of fall off uh, if you want to play around with that. So this is free if you guys want to download that uh, in the description below as well. Quadratic luma key, you can open it up and see how I did it. It's basically the same as this, but just using uh, what I just showed. So this is also a really good technique for uh, remapping P bubbles. Uh, sometimes P bubbles have that uh, already in there, in kind of in the settings, um, but a lot of times they don't. And sometimes you want a quadratic fall off in a P mat. Uh, for example, if you're relighting a CG scene, you're gonna want that nice fall off uh, in your alphas to kind of create lights in that scene. So yeah, by default, a lot of times it doesn't have the, the right fall off you want. So essentially you can take a normal linear kind of fall off like this radio here, and I could just chuck on a quadratic luma key uh, and just play around with the key and you're gonna see that it kind of gives it that quadratic look um, pretty quickly. And I don't have to do that much to it. Um, so that's kind of how it works and I can just switch the mode and it's gonna give me different fall offs on that uh, alpha. So that's pretty useful as well if you're doing, you know, maybe you're doing a car driving at night and you want to draw some headlights. Um, normally you'd have to mess around with the rotor shape and it's kind of annoying. Um, let's switch this to RGBA. So this is the quadratic luma key. I'm going to pull that out so it has the uh, effect that I want. something like this, and you see that the way it's falling off kind of feels quadratic, um, and you can slide that, sh that key around like this. Um, so the rotor shape by default does have a couple settings in here, uh, which you probably know if you're an advanced user, but sometimes it doesn't look the same way that you want, so uh, just keep that in mind, and that's basically it. So uh, here's another practical example I guess, uh, of using this uh, technique. So we have a black and white image. And one thing that this technique doesn't like is super whites. So if you have some values that are over one, um, it's gonna sort of break. So again, this this um, this kind of square that's searching the bottom pixel is looking for zero to one values. It's not really uh, looking for things past one, but uh, if you really wanna do some super whites, I've played around with uh, converting the image to log space and then doing it there and you can kind of get away with some stuff um, so you can play around with different techniques uh, to do that but usually zero to one is fine and then you can grade that image as well as your control image so if I remap that to the colors that I'm putting in so I have a couple like uh, sunset type of colors here I could put a grade beforehand and just um, essentially adjust the, the fall off of those colors quite easily. Um, you see if I go past one, it starts to break. So if I put the white clamp, it's gonna fix that problem, uh, mostly. So if you still push it around, it's uh, sort of weird, but generally zero to one is working pretty well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the other thing here, so I just, this is another example here. So you can see this is three colors and that's giving this result. And then we can put a fourth color like the blue in there and we start to get uh, some more blue in the shadows and we have some very like slightly magenta in the very dark shadows. Um, and I can shift that around uh, with my transform. So if I shift it around here, you can see that's how it works. Sometimes um, I use this as like a base image. So I'll use this ST map kind of as like a base color contamination image and then I'll just multiply that against the original. So I'm taking the original picture and multiplying that color uh, result so we can kind of mix the two and get better Lumits um, kind of range there without having to mess around too much. So 
So that's basically the concept. Hope you guys got something useful out of the video and hit like if you liked it and thanks so much.